And we're recording and I'm here with Evan Sherman, who is a speech language pathologist and um, stuttering adv advocate or um, I, 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 I'm not really sure how to describe that, but but I'm really um, I'm really excited. Um, Evan's one of the or Evan's probably the um, person who is the most excited to be on my YouTube channel. So, so that absolutely. Was really <laughs> Uh, that was really cool. Um, in in one of my in one of my earlier videos, um, I, I I asked um, Daniela um, some questions and said, "Hey, well, uh, what, what about this? And what about this?" And and Daniela said, "Well, I'm not a stuttering expert. You should ask Evan." So um, so so I was uh, I was actually rewatching my video today, and um, and Daniela said, "Oh, you should you, you should ask Evan." So 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 I just like found him on Facebook, um, chatted, "Hey, do you want to do a video?" And and Evan said, "Yeah, yeah, right now." Um, so. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. so, so, so here we, um, here, um, here we are, and it's just really cool that you're so excited. I, I've only met one person um, before that's so uh, ready to just jump into a public speak, speaking situation before. And this, uh, um, th this guy was a top level salesperson. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, I've been, um, I mean, I've been, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that this is like your typical way that like a person who stutters would you know, d d do things either, but I've been pretty accepting of my stuttering and very open and w willing to talk to anybody at any time about it since, you know, probably about 2008 or 2009. So yeah, really excited to, um, to speak with you about this. So th thank you for the invite. Yeah, cool. And, um, and, and thank you for doing this. So, um, so, so it was 2008. And so um, can you talk about like what happened in 2008? Like, um, because yeah. Um, because I um, just a lot of people that I know with stuttering um, aren't aren't really like all that excited about talking about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. And prior to 2008, I was very, um, very apprehensive to talk in general. Um, I uh, my bachelor's is in gerontology, which is the study of aging. But way deep down, I really wanted to be a speech therapist. I just didn't have the confidence and until 2008. So what happened in 2008 was um, the National Stuttering Association uh, uh, came to New Jersey. And um, I'm from Syracuse, so it wasn't too long of a drive. And um, I went and it was completely life-changing. Um, if I had known that it would have been so life-changing, I would have traveled you know, to the ends of the US to go or you know, beyond that uh, to go. Um, but I had no idea. You know, I was you know, in my mid-20s. Um, I wish I'd gone earlier, uh, but yeah, in 2008 was when I went to, to my first conference uh, for the National Stuttering Association, met, you know, six or 700 other people who stutter and finally felt that, um, finally realized that I was not alone um, and that it's okay to stutter. And at, it was at that time that I became accepting of myself and, um, mm -hmm. You know, as a result, I, uh, you know, now I really take any speaking engagement or, you know, any speaking opportunity that I can um, to educate about stuttering. So, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's awesome. So, uh, so, so can you talk about, um, can you talk more about your like journey with, uh, with, uh, with stuttering? Uh, like, like, is it, is it that your stuttering was uh, what was a lot more severe earlier or uh, um, can, um, can you just talk about like like your life throughout and how you've progressed with stuttering? Yeah, sure. Um, so I started stuttering when I first started talking and um, I, I mean, you would try like my parents tried everything that they could, you know, to help me. Um, I was in therapy throughout my life uh, and um, you know, nothing really worked at that time because I really didn't, I don't know, at that, at that age, you know, I was more interested in, you know, other things. I wasn't really buying into therapy. Um, I, uh, you know, I re remember in school, you know, I would sit in class and, um, they would have you read these par paragraphs, um, you know, from, from your textbook and they would go, you know, you're, desks would be in a row and you know each student would read um each paragraph and you know when it came to you you were so apprehensive 
and so nervous and so overwhelmed with you know anxiety that it was just you couldn't get a word out and um you know i used to ask to go i used to raise my hand and ask to go to the bathroom uh before they even got to me so they would just skip me uh i you know didn't want to talk at all um and I guess, you know, as the years went on, you know, nothing really got better. Um, I was in therapy up until I was in middle school. And then I kind of took a break until high school. Then in high school, um, there was a therapist that actually had just moved to town who actually stuttered herself. And so that was something new. And my parents, you know, they were like, well, maybe this would work, you know, maybe you know, since she stutters, you know, Evan stutters, maybe they can re relate and, you know, uh, it would just be, be easier for him. Um, maybe he'd buy into therapy a little bit more, uh, seeing her confidence. And, um, he, you know, I did. Um, and I saw her every single week um, and it helped, but I still, you know, I hadn't been around a lot of other people who stutter. It was still very, very hard. Um, I, uh, I went to college, kind of the same thing. I can remember um, during my undergrad, uh, I was in a class, it was senior year, mind you, and I was in my legal studies class and I, um, I didn't want to talk. Like I, like, I actually wish that the teacher at the beginning of the year said that they'd like everybody to introduce themselves so everybody would know that I, that I, that I stutter. Um, but she never did that. And as a result, I was too anxious to speak up. And by the end of the year or the end of that semester, we had to give a presentation uh, in front of the class. And I can remember like having not talked at all throughout the entire semester in this class. I can remember standing up there, just not able to get a word out sweating and anxious and tired and upset and and the whole class just looking at me like what's going on here like well, well, why is this guy talking like this um th that's one very uh um debilitating experience that i had um in college uh yeah but um but but, but as i um you know after college um i decided um, that, uh, that, well, I mean, it, it really was not until the NSA uh, came to town that I decided that, um, that I was going to actually do something about this and, be, and learn to be okay with this. And that's when I went to the NSA conference and um, met so many others who stutter. And interestingly enough, after I came home from the conference, um, I decided to start a chapter, like a support group for the NSA, um, like a National Stuttering Association support group. And um, like I called the, the national office at the same time that my school counselor called. So my, I had an elementary school counselor who was a, uh, who also stuttered and um, he uh, he was like my kind of out outlet during those years, and um, I uh, he called the NSA at the same time I did to start a chapter, and um, we ended up reconnecting after like had to be fifteen years through the NSA, and we actually started our own chapter, um, and we did that together. So that was really really nice. Um, but well, that, I mean, yeah. And, um, and that's in, you're in Florida, right? So I'm in Florida now. This was when I was living in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, and then, and, and can you talk about, um, can you talk about the NSAs um, and, 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 and the conference, the conference you mentioned, is that like a yearly conference? And, and NSA stands for National Stuttering Association, right? Yes, yeah, that's correct. And um, yeah, uh, up until this year, yes, it's a yearly yearly conference. We we did a we did a virtual conference this year, but yeah. Um, and actually, we reached people beyond, you know, the U.S. I mean, it, it was a really 
good thing for us, I think. Um, but yeah, um, it's a yearly, it's a yearly conference. Um, the last in-person conference, not this year, but the previous year was in Fort Lauderdale. Cool. And then um, how many people usually come and is it, is it like a regular conference where you have like speakers and, and workshops or is it like a big party or, or um, what, um, what's the, um, what, what's kind of the vibe of the, of the NSA conference? So, I mean, there's usually anywhere between 600 and 850 people who come. Um, I think we did break a thousand one year. Um, but so it's, there are most definitely a lot of, a lot of workshops. Um, and the workshops are very, very helpful, very benef beneficial. Uh, but it's actually, um, I would say that the best part about the conference are the social gatherings and meeting others who stutter. Um, you, you know, as I said earlier, like well, once I met so many other people who stuttered, it just, you know, it showed me that, you know, it's okay to stutter. Um, you learn to be okay with, with stuttering through meeting others. Yes, the workshops are there for your education and highly recommended that people go to them. But um, meeting other people who stutter is probably the most um, powerful thing for people who stutter. Um, and, you know, is it one big, one big party? That's one aspect of it, I would say. Um, we do, we do, we do like to, uh, you know, gather and have fun and go out and, you know, enjoy each other's company. Um, but it's also a lot of um, education too, so. Well, and then um, how much, um, how much are the in-person conferences usually um, to attend? <laughs> To attend, um, ah, man, I don't even know offhand. I think so. There, there are a couple hundred dollars, possibly a little, little bit more, de depending on what you want to do. But that also does not include, you know, airfare and um, travel. But okay, okay, um, cool. So, so, so that, uh, so that's pretty reasonably priced. So your airfare generally is probably going to be more than your than the actual ticket to the conference. So yeah, um, so um, so that's nice. So. Um, yeah. so so one of the things that I'm uh, one of the things that I'm hoping that you'll kind of describe is that is that I think I think most people know what stuttering sounds like, um, j um, just like like being able to identify and say oh yeah that um, that person's um, stuttering but I think most people don't really understand like the experience of of stuttering, um, mm -hmm. and um, and and that's that's one of the reasons that uh, that that's one of the reasons that I'm so fascinated about stuttering is. Uh, the first, uh, the first couple people that I talked to with stuttering started explaining this, uh, um, explaining to me and explaining like all, um, a lot of the stuff that went uh, that went through them like like internally, and I realized, oh, this is uh, um, for, uh, for me. It was really really cool to hear about this experience that like millions or hundreds of millions of people are having worldwide, but uh, but people aren't really talking about very much. Um, uh, well, I guess I, I guess besides you, and so. Um, <laughs> um, and so, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping you'll, um, uh, like, like take, um, uh, take, take people who don't stutter through the experience of like, what's, uh, what, uh, what's it actually, uh, what, what's stuttering actually like, what, uh, what, what is stuttering? Yeah. Um, that's such a complex question. Um, <laughs> what is, what is, what is stuttering? So, um, the one thing, the first thing that I can say is that stuttering is definitely neurological. Um, it's not something that you just, you know, randomly start doing because I don't know. It's 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 definitely involved with the with the with the brain and you know a lot a lot of new and uh, recent recent studies have come out about you know the the possible low location or you know possible activation of different areas of the, of the brain when somebody's stuttering um it's definitely um neurological um the experience of stuttering um how can i begin <laughs> um it's very um have you, so I mean, it's almost like, so you, you know exactly what you want to say. You know um, the words that you want to, to say to communicate your thoughts, but because of tension um, that you're experiencing while you're trying to say them, uh, they just don't come out. Um, that's basically, from a motoric standpoint, uh, that's 
basically what stuttering is. It's a, it's, it's a disorder of, of tension and timing um, of, your, of your speech. But it goes so much deeper than that because you know, over time, um, we develop this burden and this fear of speaking. Um, the more negative experience that you have with stuttering, the more of a fear of stuttering that you're going to have. Um, so, um, so, so much of stuttering is really based on like the severity of stuttering, you know, often, oftentimes the severity of stuttering can, can be affected by um, your, uh, your anxiety about stuttering. And stuttering is definitely not caused by anxiety, uh, but, it's most, it, but it can most definitely be exacerbated by anxiety. Um, I, I mean, there is a, the, the, there's a group of people who stutter um, that are covert, you know, that hide their, hide their stuttering um, because they don't want anybody to know that they stutter at all. Um, and as a result, that kind of changes how they live their life completely. Um, they might choose a profession that, that does not involve any communication at all. Um, they might um, change their name when they're talking to certain people. Uh, they might, um, uh, well, what else? Um, the, 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 they might do all that they can to not let anybody know that they, that they, that they stutter. Um, and that is something that can be very debilitating over time. And that's kind of, you know, to the extreme um, where you just. Uh, and I, and um, I met, I, I met a covert, um, I, um, I met, I met someone with covert stuttering before. Uh, it was uh, uh, because I, um, since I have cluttering and cluttering and stuttering, uh, like, like a lot, a, a lot of the articles about cluttering are um, cluttering is this and then stuttering is this. And so, uh, and so in, in learning about, in learning about my speech, then I learned a lot about stuttering too. And I remember, um, I remember, I, um, I think it was at work and uh, like I heard something and I, uh, like somebody said, and I, and then I said, hey, um, you stutter, don't you? And he's like, hey, hey, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Um, and, yeah. and he was basically, he basically said, don't tell anyone. Nobody knows yeah. this. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so, 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 so then I thought, oh wow, maybe, maybe stuttering is like way more common than, um, than people, uh, because if this, if this guy, if this guy stutters, like who, who else stutters that, that I don't know about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah anyway, absolutely. Um, sorry to um, sorry to interrupt your story about the experience of uh, of stuttering with like with covert stuttering, but but I think that's um, like like I think that someone someone that mildly someone that mildly stutters that um, can, um, that, that can basically like hide it from other people like, like that whole thing is just really interesting that yeah um, that, that I don't um, I don't know if people even know that that's a thing. Um, and, yeah. Um, like no, I mean, um, absolutely. I mean, there's a statistic that uh, one percent of the pop population stutters. <laughs> you know, when you really think about it, that is um, that's a pretty large number, and um, we don't um, see a lot of those one percent. I mean, we uh, we encounter you know several people a day, several people a. W a week, um, who um, who may actually stutter, but we just we don't they don't make it known, or they have ways of making it very unknown. Um, I do think that you know stuttering severity over time can get better. I am most definitely not as disloomed as I was. Um, you know, as I said earlier. Um, once I became comfortable being who I was and being comfortable stuttering, being okay with others hearing me talk and hearing me stutter, that's when I, my, the severity of my stuttering started to de decrease. Now that's not saying that I have days when it's a little bit more severe than others. Just a couple of days ago, I had a pretty bad day stuttering. I don't really know why it was kind of a stressful week. So, um, you know, pretty much anything can tri trigger it. Um, but um, I, uh, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very like, uh, it's very, um, you know, situational and it's very, over time, you know, with acceptance, um, oftentimes the severity does actually re re reduce. So yeah, that's just a little bit about stuttering. The actual experience about stuttering, I mean, um, think I, w I was once uh, shown a, uh, like a, the, uh, there's, an al there's an analogy of a Chinese finger trap. Have you ever seen the Chinese finger trap where like you, 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 like it's that it's that thing where you like you you put both of your fingers into 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 this contraption and you can't get it out, but the only way to get it out is to slightly push in and then gradually and slowly pull it out. But that feeling of not being able to get out and like that's I relate that directly to tension. Like if you are pulling, 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 there's no way that you're gonna get it out. But if you just smoothly pull it out and sort of work with it a little bit and smoothly pull it out, then um, you're gonna have an easier time moving forward in your, in your, in your speech too. It's, it's, it's kind of the same, same thing. So yeah, <laughs> a little bit about stuttering. <laughs> cool, um, cool. And um, and one of the uh, one of my questions about stuttering is what uh, what the st what the stuttering disfluencies are. And uh, da uh, Daniela talked about that a little bit. Um, and 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 this is one of the questions where he said, "Well, my my answer is not complete. Ask um, ask Evan." Yeah. Um, so so oh, well, let me uh, let me first talk about like the the cluttering disfluencies and like like kind of where my mind uh, mind frame is. Um, so. So one of the things with cluttering is is that all of the cluttering disfluencies are um, like quote unquote normal disfluencies, like like fluencies that people without any speech problems have. Um, so, so so there's basically there's basically four of these like cluttering disfluencies. One um, one is repetitions, and and, and they're, they're, they're repetitions that aren't uh, like a lot of the books say repetitions that aren't stuttering repetitions. Um, so, so like something that I will do, uh, something that I will do or folks with, with cluttering do is they repeat the same word or phrase over, over and over again. So I might say, I, uh, like, if, like if I want to say, I, I want to go to the store, I might say, I want, I, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to go, I, I want to go to the store. So, so that's like a typical cluttering repetition. That's very, very different than a stuttering repetition. Uh, the, uh, the other one is, is interjections, uh, which are either um uh, in, uh interjections which uh, like which are commonly like like filler words saying like um yeah. uh like and um and then and then revisions like um uh, like like starting uh, starting a sentence and then like changing it to a completely different sentence and mm -hmm. and, and i think I, I think um stuttering does that too but like to avoid words not um uh, not because like like my head is kind of going all over the place and and revising the sentences um as it um, comes and um, and then there's uh, the, the last one is commonly called telescoping, but it's more like you know those old style telescopes that can compress. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so so it's basically like like taking a word um, and then only saying like parts of the word. So so sometimes, especially when I'm talking fast and I want to say cluttering, then it might come out as cutting or mm -hmm. uh, like dropping sounds and syllables. So um, so anyway, th um, those are the. Uh, um, those are basically the four stuttering, or sorry, the four cluttering disfluencies, which everybody uh, everybody does uh, um, one or more of those uh, multiple times a day. Um, and just with with, with cluttering, then uh, with cluttering, then um, it kind of gets to a point where there's so uh, th there's so many of them that it interrupts the no normal flow of speech. Sure, sure. sure. Um, so so anyway, that's my. Uh, that's my introduction to cluttering, and so, so so I'm hoping you can like give basically the same thing about stuttering. Yeah, I um, mean, so there actually so there is some s s similarities actually between cluttering and stuttering. Um, it's the difference. Oh, your is like, um, your sound just went off, so I can't. Um, oh, weird. Move. I, I I didn't change uh, anything. Okay. Okay. Right, okay. Um, uh, now, uh, now, uh, now it's back. So so maybe okay. I. Um, maybe I oh and it, uh, now it's saying my internet connection's unstable. So 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 it's actually uh, it, it was actually probably on my side. Um, no so, so so I think 
Um, I think we're I, I think we're back. We're good um, now. So yeah, yeah, I think we're back and good. Cool. So yeah, um, there are there are actually a lot there are similarities between the the two. With stuttering, there's most definitely interjections. Uh, with uh, stuttering, there's most definitely um, sound syllable repet repetitions. Now, not everybody stutters the same, of course. There are some people who don't do interjections, some people who don't do sound syllable repetitions. In stuttering, there is also inaudible prolongations or blocks. So like a completely stoppage of sound. Um, can't get the word out, can't get any sounds out, that would be a block. Um, uh, so, uh, and then there's there's also pr pr prolongations where you might be prolonging a word or a phrase. Well, yeah, pro prolonging a word. Like if I was going to say that uh, your connection is unstable, I might you know prolong the n in the the, the unstable. Okay, or if I was introducing myself, my name is Evan. Um, that would be considered a prolong prolongation. But the difference between um, these similarities is the tension, okay? So, I mean, there is most definitely more tension in stuttering, um, uh, especially in, in, in regards to blocking. Um, when, when you have a block, there is basically either a like a slowing of air, just a stoppage of air um, where you can't get the word out at all. Um, with the ther so th it, it's a lot of different um, like terms as far as how you describe what stuttering actually is. But in the end, what we're really talking about with all of these different terms is just a difference in tension and timing. There's definitely more tension and definitely timing um, is, of, um, uh, is prevalent as well. Um, the, 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 there's also definitely interjections, but with the interjections, it may, it's mainly due to us trying to avoid a word um, or us trying to start a word. Um, but can't quite get it started. So we'll throw in an um just to get ourselves started. And what can happen there is that um might work for the first few times, but once the brain catches on, the um is not gonna work. So you find yourself saying um, 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 so um, um, so um, and then it just doesn't work anymore. Um, a lot of what I do in stuttering therapy is actually um, attempting to get rid of all of these interjections, uh, which are essentially called avoidance uh, techniques. You know, we're basically avoiding the stutter. Um, we're avoiding um, the words, we're avoiding the stutter. We're not allowing ourselves to stutter authentically. Um, and that's kind of the goal of my stuttering therapy. Um, the way that I do things, it's mainly an avoidance reduction approach. Um, learning to stutter openly and be okay with stuttering openly and not adding anything in, and not changing how we're talking or how we're stuttering to, um, to really uh, uh, to get through uh, your sentences inauthentically. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of how I, how I uh, uh, approach it. So there are a lot of, you know, similarities, but um, there's also um, the way that we, um, you know, implement these different um, uh, types of stuttering um, is different than <laughs> cluttering for, sh for sure. Yeah, yeah and that's, uh, that's, really, that's really fascinating. And, and I want to ask you about um, avoidance or um, what, uh, what was the... Avoidance uh, reduction? Yeah, yeah, I want to ask you more about avoidance reduction. But, uh, but, but first, can you talk more about blocking? Uh, because, uh, because I think I think that probably when most people think about stuttering, they think about the stuttering repetition. And people have probably heard blocking, but probably like don't really understand it enough to be able to like identify, okay, well, this, uh, this part of this guy's speech is repetition um, and this part is blocking. So, um, so, so can you talk about that? Because I, um, I think that's a really fascinating term that like most people yeah. 
uh, most people that don't know very much about stuttering may not really even understand at all. Sure, yeah. So, um, so as far as repetitions go, repetitions are basically this, okay? So it's like your typical, like, cliche stuttering, you know, what, what everybody thinks of when they think of stuttering um, is those re -re 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 repetitions like that. And um, um, that's basically where I like to get my clients as well. I like to actually get them repeating their sounds and repeating their syllables rather than blocking. Because when you're blocking, there's no movement of, of air. You got nowhere to actually go. And actually, in most cases, I actually kind of view blocking as almost an avoidance tactic for stuttering. So like for avoiding the repetition or for avoiding the actual stutter itself. Um, with a block, there's, as I said, a complete stoppage of air. So a block, okay? So there's no air coming out, no sound coming out. That would be more of a block. But a lot of times I'm finding through my, uh, through working with my clients that they're blocking in an attempt to avoid the repetitions. So I actually try to get them repeating and authentically this, 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 the stuttering la, 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 like this, instead of, bu, 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 instead of bu, 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 blocking like, like that. Okay. So and it's a complete stoppage of air. Okay, and, and, and that's, uh, that, uh, that's really interesting. Actually, in my interview with Daniela, then I, then I tried, uh, um, the first person that um, explained blocking to me explained it, in, explained it really similar to you, and I, and I was trying to explain that to Daniela, and I didn't really have the wording. Um, so, uh, and um, I remember the person that, uh, I remember the person that was describing blocking as an, avoid, as, as, as an avoidance behavior um, he, um, he, he basically said that when, uh, that, that he feels really emotional while he's blocking and, and, and I, and I use the, and I use the word emotional in the video with Daniela and he's like, no, 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 stuttering, um, stuttering is not an emotional, like it's not caused by emotions. Um, but, um, but, um, but, but, but anyway, um, now that I, uh, now that you have described all of that now, um, now I know that like the wording for it, which is, uh, which is basically that sometimes, uh, um, sometimes, and it sounds like in your opinion, often, um, blocking is an avoidance uh, is an avoidance behavior, and so a lot of your uh, a lot of your um, therapy is about teaching people to to stutter naturally instead of um, in, um, instead instead of doing the blocking so, um, so that you've actually like got some some air coming out. So um, so can you talk yeah. about can you talk about that more uh, because if if blocking is if blocking is sometimes an avoidance um behavior then that means it's kind of a learned thing right like uh, like, like yeah. probably people probably people didn't start like at four years old blocking but then um but then but then when they got like self-conscious around like nine nine or ten or whenever um then they um that then people just kind of learned blocking is that is that accurate or, or how would how would you well, how would you kind of describe that so I don't know like the data on this specifically. So I'm just going to make a few assumptions, which isn't always good. But um, when you are, you know, four years old, five years old, three years old, you know, first start, st starting to have either normal dysfluencies or, you know, actual stuttering itself, um, blocking can occur once the child starts to push. Okay. So like when, when there is, you know, as I said, stuttering is uh, a, a disorder of, of tension, um, you know, in addition to timing, it, it's, it's tension. So when a, um, w when a child can't get the word out, they're going to try to push. And that's when the blocking can start as well. Um, oh, so, it, and, so it, can start, it can start pretty early on then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Once the child realized that you know, they're having trouble getting these words out, they're naturally going to start to push and they start up and they start hitting this roadblock um, where they can't get through. All right. The, the, they're pushing as hard as they can, but they can't get through the road, the roadblock there. Um, so I, 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 I would say that blocking definitely um, can start early. Um, absolutely. And just 
kind of going back on, you know, uh, blocking and emotions. I, I, I could see that blocking, like, all right, if you're, if you're standing in front of your, your class, um, giving a presentation and you can't get a, like you're stuck in a block and there's complete silence um, and, and you feel like everybody's staring at you um, in this complete silence and you cannot get these words out, um, you're, you're stuck. That can definitely cause a lot of negative emotions. Um, that's why, you know, you get nervous and you start sweating and uh, you become, you know, you panic, you go into this panic, can't get this word out, I'm stuck. Um, I, I mean, stuttering, okay, stuttering isn't caused and, um, by... Oh, um, sorry, sorry, you, uh, you cut out again. I'm, I'm hoping it was on, um, I'm hoping it was on my side again. So, so, so anyways, I'm sorry. Um, sorry for interrupting okay. you. Um, Where did, uh, 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 what did you hear last? Um, stuttering is very, um, stuttering, um, did, did you hear about like me talking about like uh, standing in front of a class and all that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, you know, standing in front of a class, you're very, if you're blocking and you get stuck, you get stuck for, you know, a few seconds, at least you do feel a sense of embarrassment and a sense of shame and a sense of anxiety. You know, they, your classmates are staring at you. You're nervous, you go into a panic. There's definitely emotions there. Um, do the emotions cause your stuttering? Not inherently, but do they exacerbate your stuttering? Stuttering, absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, when, you're, when you're anxious, when you're scared, when you're apprehensive, when you're upset, uh, well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It can most definitely cause you to have um, a lot of disfluencies. I, it's just like the iceberg analogy of stuttering. Have you seen the iceberg analogy? Um, I've uh, um, I've seen the. Oh yeah, I think I uh, I think I have. But can can you describe it? Yeah. So um, you've got basically an iceberg, and you've got the tip of the iceberg, which is um, um, just above the water, which is which. Um, uh, which relates to the actual overt stuttering. So the actual stuttering itself, okay? Um, and then, but really, and I mean, like that's kind of where I like to get to in therapy. I like the tip of the iceberg to be bigger, <laughs> okay? But inherently what's under the waterline is miles and miles of ice. And that in there, you know, what's under the, wa the waterline are like, you know, I wouldn't say maybe, I don't know how big an iceberg actually is, but like, I would say, you know, a very, very long way down, you've got the fear and the shame and the anxiety, um, you know, all, all the things that you cannot, sorry, all the things that you can't see. Can, can, can you see me? Okay. Sorry. Um, you, uh, you cut out for just a second and okay. Okay. Now, now, now you're back. Sorry about that. Um, I was getting a call. I, I apologize. But, um, all the things that you can't see, you know, everything that you can't see, the emotions. Um, so yes, uh, uh, and the emotions are um, kind of where you work in therapy. You know, that's kind of what you, what you work on um, in therapy be because you want to be able to show um, more stuttering and be okay with it. Um, so the emotions most definitely have an impact on, on your stuttering. It may not organically cause it, but um, it can definitely exacerbate it for sure. Oh, cool. And that's, uh, that's a really interesting description of that and, and very, uh, uh, very, very helpful. So, so I, um, uh, um, before we talk about more like av avoidance reduction, I um, I want to talk about both um, both you and um, Daniela have a really interesting like really interesting web pages. Um, um, his website his web page is stuttering is cool, and, and he wrote a book called Stuttering is Cool. And then your your web page is I stutter so what? Um, yeah, yeah, it's my old um, yeah it's my it's my it's my old web page which I haven't updated in like seven years, but it's still there I think. Yeah, I think it's I think it's still there. Yeah, and and I still get people who who uh, who contact who contact me 
through that website. So yeah, absolutely. Uh -oh. Um, okay, so I was um, I was wondering about that because uh, because I saw that you hadn't updated it for 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 quite a while. So what's your what's your new web page? So um, my new web page is actually my uh, my business web web page. It's called uh, progressionspeechtherapy.com, um, and it's basically uh, for my my private practice. Okay, yeah, and that's um, that's a really cool name too because it's. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's basically kind of saying like, wherever you are, wherever you are now, then you can get a little bit better. And so, so it's a really hopeful um, yeah. sounding. I, I, I don't know if that's your, like, like the philosophy behind your clinic, but, uh, but it's a really cool name. Yeah. I mean, um, it, that wherever you are now, you can definitely get to a more com comfortable spot f f for your, f for yourself. Um, I, uh, with stuttering in general, you always start somewhere, and it's uh, it's totally a pro progression. Like, you know, so many things that we do in therapy, we won't get to until a little bit l later on in like the progress of therapy. You know, it's always a pro progression. And, you know, uh, we systematically desensitize you to being okay with stuttering, and that takes time. Everything takes time. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, I've got a b b blog on there that I haven't blogged in probably in a year, but it's, you know, it's there. Um, uh, you know, I, I, life gets busy and you know, I've got kids and um, I have, uh, you know, in addition to my, um, my, my stuttering practice, I also do home health and um, I treat, uh, I treat, uh, infants as well for with feeding feeding difficulties you know i'm i'm pretty busy so um but it's definitely there <laughs> so yeah um cool um cool and and i um so so something about both your and and daniela's approach that's really really interesting and and for me i i live in thailand and so i'm trying to learn the thai language and one of the things that's really hard about um learning the Thai language is just how like severe um, other other learners are uh, like like I can't really participate in in a Thai language community because people say no no your uh, your tones are wrong you have to do this you have to do this like like you absolutely have to learn this before this um, so um, so so I um, in uh, uh, with uh, with both of, uh, with both of your approaches I think it's just really really cool that, uh, that you're basically saying, hey, well, here, um, here we are, and then these are, uh, um, and then these are the next steps. Where, where it seems like a lot of language learning or um, language learning, and then especially like Thai language learning, is just very severe. Like, oh well, if you uh, if you mispronounce this the first time, then you're going to mispronounce it wrong the rest of your life. Uh, uh, wow. Like, just uh, that's a very common attitude, and 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 uh, that. That doesn't really sit right with me because, uh, like, that's not really how people learn. Like, people never get something perfect the first time. Um, like, like, like the way you learn is you try something and you get like twenty percent. Like, like the way you learn anything, like, um, like, like just um, anything in general. You, you, uh, you think you want to learn it, then you, then you try it, then you get like twenty percent. Um, th uh, th then you try it again, you get forty percent, and then. Um, and, 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 and then to, to, to get mastery 100%, then it could take like 20 years, but but, but you mm -hmm. keep like trying and trying and trying and building and building and building, and um, and so 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 I find that uh, I find your approach just really like refreshing, and and that's why I think that like learning about stuttering is just really um, interesting because um, be, uh, because you're not like you're never saying oh well you messed up so that's really really bad like like that's mm -hmm. completely no. different than, yeah. uh, 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 that's completely different than, than your approach um so, so no, absolutely went, yeah i mean uh, like yeah i mean it's it's funny that you that you put it like that absolutely i mean with 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 stuttering it's not you never want to you know to tell somebody that like they're doing things wrong or that they that they that they messed this up here tr try again you want to work with them to see what they can do to just speak a little bit easier. Um, it's not that they messed it up. This is just how they talk, how they talk at this time. Hey, let's try a couple of things and see if this works a little bit better. So makes, uh, makes their, uh, 
let's see, see if this makes your your life a little bit easier um, when you're speaking. So yeah, absolutely. Thai, um, you know, those language in, those languages in general are very difficult to learn, um, it seems. So, so I've heard, uh, they're very, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like a, I, is it like a tonal language? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's, it um, it's, it's um, seems yeah, so they're, com they're, complex. Um, yeah, the, um, the, um, there are five, there are five tones in Thai, and um, and and then one of the like they're especially hard for um, folks with cluttering because uh, like part of um, part of cluttering is that it's really really difficult to control any parts of your speech, so it's really yeah. it's really difficult to like it, um, increase your or like uh, make make your pitch higher, make your pitch lower. It's really yeah. difficult to talk faster, talk slower, to talk um, quieter, talk louder. Like, like, like those things, uh, uh, those things for a normal person might be like, like pretty easy. Like, oh, I can talk louder, I can talk slow, uh, talk quieter. Um, um, but, but for me, that's something that like I had to like spend a lot of time like figuring out how to like even adjust the volume of my voice. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's um, very. And so, um, and so, and so sometimes when a Thai teacher like criticizes me and like, oh, well, you have to learn the pitch. I, I, I want to say, well, I, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm diagnosed with the, with the disorder that proves that I can't do this. Mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, there's no way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I've never actually said that, but, um, but, but, <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes when people are criticizing my, uh, my, my lack of being able to pick up the tones quickly, then I want to, I, I want to pull that card, even though I haven't. Sure. No, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> don't, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Make things and, easier. And actually, um, so, so, so kind of my theory is uh, like, like everyone says the Thai is, um, everyone says the Thai is really difficult to learn. And, um, and, and one, uh, one of the most popular YouTube videos is why Thai is the most difficult language in the world. Um, and um, it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not actually, it's probably like number 40 in all of the languages. Um, so, so it's, uh, but my uh, my opinion is that it's only difficult because of the way that people currently teach it. And I think if uh, I think if people took more of your approach, like you were like you were describing of like number one, work on avoidance um, reduction and and how that translates into language learning. Mm -hmm. Like if um, if that were the approach of learning Thai. Um, and, and we had like a lot of teachers doing that, then I think that Thai would, would suddenly become a pretty easy language to learn. Interesting. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, that, um, that's yeah. kind of my, uh, uh, that's kind of my theory, but like, like, you, like you should start like a, like a, I don't know, like you should start like a business in that, uh, to, you know, from people who want to, to learn the, the, the language or something. And then, I don't know, kind of approach it in that, in that way. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and actually, like, um, so, so Thai, um, Thai education, uh, Thai education, and Thai teachers are pretty old school. Like, uh, like I think, like, like one of the things that sounds really cool at first is that Thai teachers are, uh, Thai teachers are very, very respected. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so, Thai, so Thai teachers are basically like, like really high up in the in the level, uh, like, like just under monks, which are really, really high, high status in Thailand. Um, so, um, so, so, so you always, uh, you always, why, uh, why, uh, why is the, uh, why is the thing like this? And, and actually with, uh, uh, within Thailand, the higher, uh, the higher status someone is, the higher you hold your hands. Um, so, really? so if, um, yeah, so, so, so if we're really good friends, I would, why you like this? Um, yeah. if, if you're, uh, if, if you're my mom, I would, why you like this? If, if you're a priest, I would, why you like this? Very interesting. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, and so um, and so and so Thai, te Thai teachers are really really high status, and, and you would yeah. think that would be a positive because uh, because like in America everyone says oh well uh, teachers don't get enough respect and stuff like that, and in Thailand teachers get a whole bunch of respect, but 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 one of the really bad things is that Thai um, the the Thai teachers are so respected that students will never question them. Students will never say hey I I don't understand that. Can you go over that again? Like that's completely disrespectful in Thailand for a student to say that. And so, uh, um, so, so, so there's not really very much dialogue. And then, uh, well, I've been, I've been in a situation like this a few times, like, like I was a manager and I thought I was doing great. Um, and then, and then I, sw I, I switched, I, I switched jobs. So I was no longer a manager. 
and I realized, well, well, how come I'm so terrible at everything? And and I realized, oh, it's because um, when I was a manager, then then all my feedback loop was, oh, you're you're doing great, your decisions are awesome, you're. Uh, and, and, uh, and then when I went to a regular job, when I where, where I didn't manage anyone, and I was I was saying, hey, you should do this. Um, people were like, well, f you, Joseph. Um, <laughs> um, um, and so, so who do you think? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because kind of as a manager, uh, um, a manager like a lot of times you just don't get a feedback loop of oh well your your um, your stuff is horrible um, because the people that are working for you are paid to do whatever the thing whatever it is you think are um, is good. So um, so anyway, this is kind of a long yeah. introduction to avoid no, no. Um, but um, um, but basically uh, basically with Thai teachers um, they, um, they um, what happened to me when I was a manager. Um, is what happens to, to Thai teachers, and so 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 they're in this feedback loop where whatever they think, uh, wh whatever they're teaching, they think is is awesome, and a lot of time it's um, it's not. And um, and and most of the Thai teachers are just very 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 severe. Like, oh, you made a mistake. I need to correct you. Um, and uh, my my little brother actually did this YouTube, this whole YouTube video about um, where, where he keeps repeating the phrase, "Error correction is the lowest form of coaching." Um, um, uh, which he basically means that if mm -hmm. if you're if you're trying to help someone and all you do is like point out what's wrong with them, then you're not really a teacher. You're not really a coach. You're um, you're just uh, like, you're like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. bringing like, them down. Uh, yeah. Really, yeah. Like yeah. if it, I like if I did that in therapy, they would come here <laughs> once one time and then they would leave and I would never see them again. I mean, I would never see them again. It's got to be positive re reinforcement with everything. I mean, they've 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 got to be in be into it and enjoy what we're doing and feel like we're uh, we're uh, we're making progress and they've got to feel we feel successful. You know, I, I I've got to make them successful, not bring them not bring them down. So, yeah. Okay, and um, and so um, so so with my super super lengthy introduction to avoidance reduction, um, can, um, can you um, can you talk about some um, some stuttering avoidance behaviors, and then and then um, what you what what you do to uh, what you do to um, basically reduce those avoidance behaviors? Sure, absolutely. So um, you know, as I said earlier, and I do them too. Like nobody who stutters is perfect including myself um it just it kind of goes with the territory but but it's how much it is negatively affecting your forward flow of speech um and how much is it's affecting your authentic authenticity um in your speech or in your stuttering in general how how authentic are you in your stuttering um what are you adding in there that shouldn't shouldn't be there that's making you not you um we talked about uh, interjections earlier, the ums, the likes, um, what I do sometimes. Uh, we talked about the blocks, you know, the when we should be just allowing ourselves to like move forward, you know, in our, in our, in our speech. We talked about word changing, um, you know, switching around our words or switching around our phrases. So we're saying something that we didn't intend to say. The goal of my therapy, um, while, in, while incorporating avoidance reduction, is that we always say what we mean to say, what we want to say, what we intend to, to, to say. Regardless of how it comes out, we're going to say what we want to say. Um, that's kind of my goal. How I approach it is, so I actually had, um, I have a client right now who, um, who uses a word that um, that used to help him to get through um, his um, uh, you know his his disfluency? Dis like he uses the word of, and the word of seemed to work way back. You know when he first started using it. You know he would use of to start his words, start his phrases, to get the words out. But now he uses of for everything. So of i don't know of i'm going to the gym later of i'm so it's not very and then it turns into of i'm of 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 i'm go of of i'm going and then that's when you know that's uh that's an avoidance that has now doesn't work anymore so 
the thing with avoidance reduction is you have to get rid of all of your avoidances so that doesn't happen so they don't you know uh, they don't stop 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 working and you're stuck stuck with this avoidance that is just you know causing you more of an issue than it would be if you would just authentically allow yourself to stutter openly um uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, avoidance reduction is, is, is open stuttering, allowing yourself to just let the stuttering go um, freely. Um, so how do we address this stuff? We definitely address it systematically. Um, so I would sort of take a, make a list of all the avoidances that my clients have. And I would sort of tally up, you know, which ones are, are affecting him the most you know which ones is he using the most which one is, are, is he relying on the most and then systematically we would just get rid of them you know we would start with the one that he is using probably the least amount of times and we would get rid of that first and then we would go through the list go through the list and all the way down until there are no more avoidances and he is speaking authentically um and for freely and you know what we, what i found is that as you start to get into these things, you know, one at a time, um, the other avoidances that he's using more frequently, they, he, he actually stops using, uh, he or she, they, they, they actually stop using or they reduce them naturally anyway. So by the time we get there, they're, uh, they're reduced to the point where they're not affecting the forward flow of speech. Um, and that is, um, yeah, that's, that's the goal. And then also, not only do we avoid, we use avoidances to avoid, you know, actual stuttering, but we also, as I said, I think I mentioned earlier, we avoid situations, you know, we might avoid talking on the phone, we might avoid asking a question of a, of a, of a manager in a store, we might avoid ordering food, we might avoid the drive through. So we work through those as well. Again, we start with the one that is, that we fear the most. Actually, we start. We start. We actually start with the one that we fear the least, and then we gradually get to the highest feared um, of, of avoidance scenario. So, the the uh, the scenario that is least affecting you, we would start with. Like that might be like the least feared speaking experience might be talking with your spouse or talking with your mom. Okay, um, so maybe talking with your mom about, about stuttering, okay? So start, start there. And then maybe the most feared might be talking with your boss, um, talking with somebody of authority. So um, you, you, uh, you were in, you know, in, bet in between that you've got, uh, you know, the drive-through and making calls, you know, all these things we would just work through. And, and until we are speaking without fear, speaking without shame, and speaking with um, authenticity st and stuttering. Really, not just speaking, we're stuttering freely. Uh, I mean, we're stuttering with authentic, authentic, authenticity. There's no cure for, for stuttering. There's a lot of snake oil out there that's saying, hey, um, if you do this, we're going to have you stop stuttering. and You're going to stop stuttering. No, there is no cure for stuttering. There may be a way to make stuttering easier. Uh, which is what we do um, in, um, with the evidence that we have. Um, but there is no, no cure. So we've got to learn how to stutter freely, stutter openly, and be okay with ourselves. You know, being okay with stuttering, you know, being okay with having a bad day. Um, uh, you know, I, as I said, a couple, a couple days ago, I, um, it was just a rough stuttering day. I could not get my words out. It was really, really, really rough. And I came home. I was kind of bummed out, like, oh, what a day. But I wasn't scared to go out and talk again because you know what? The, 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 this is me. I think I just kind of needed like some decompressing time, <laughs> which does happen. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I s sort of rambled a little bit there beyond um, stuttering. Um, you know, avoidance, but I feel like, you know, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about uh, the, those, those things. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, I'm really glad you went into that detail because, uh, because this, uh, this is just really, really interesting. And, and, and one of my questions on this is uh, because 
at 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 first with with a lot of like traditional um, like traditional old school education, um, probably a lot of people would say, well, your your approach is wrong. You have to like like um, stuttering is a problem. You need to work. You need to fix. You need to fix stuttering. Yeah. But, uh, but but I'm really I'm really glad you went into all that detail because you're basically like proving very solidly that um, that 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 approach is really really. Uh, is really really counterproductive, and yeah. and, um, and and basically like um, um, getting to the point where you're not doing these avoidance behaviors, but doing the uh, doing the um, normal authentic stuff. authentic yeah, stuttering, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, stuttering uh, freely. Yeah. So, so so one of my questions is: Do uh, do folks with stuttering sometimes have a hard time like like getting their mind around that, like? Uh, like, do you ever do you ever start explaining that to someone, and and they and they're like, well, like I can't do that because, uh, and then they list um, they list a whole bunch of reasons. Well, um, I have to do this. I have to do this. Uh, like, is it uh, is it ever is it ever kind of a process for someone to like wrap their head around? Uh, uh, because like like I know um, from the like the first time I heard this concept that you're describing, um, I thought, oh, this is like, like it's it's different. It's cool. It's interesting. I I don't understand it, but I want to learn more. Uh, like that was my approach. But but I I I don't I don't stutter. So I um um so so like um me wrapping my head around it is is a lot different than someone else that you're trying to say. Hey, well, um we're here. We're gonna get you to here. Um, the way to do it is to, is through this. And they're like, no, I can't, <laughs> I can't do that. Like, yeah. does that does that happen, or or is it sometimes hard for folks? Yeah, I mean, I know it's so funny. Um, like you know, people come to me, and you know, they expect me to you know give them techniques to make them stop stuttering, and essentially what I'm doing with avoidance reduction is I'm at least. For a little while, I'm gonna, they're going to be stuttering more than they were, <laughs> because I'm making them actually stutter. I'm making them not avoid this the stutter, and um, it's um, you know my uh, one of my mentors um, while she was um, I went to a workshop uh, that she was t t t teaching on this avoidance re reduction. Her big thing is you know we're, we're going to stutter ugly. You know we're going to get you know ugly stuttering, you know, we're going to, we're going to stutter how we, how we inherently do stutter. We're going to let that stuttering go. And it's going to be ugly because we've avoided it for so long, so long. Um, people are, that's a hard concept for, um, for clients to grasp, but I haven't had a lot of trouble. And it's because when people come to me, they've had so much therapy and it's usually therapy that is that hasn't worked, hasn't worked at all. And they've spent all this money on therapy and spent all this time, put all this effort that it has not worked. And they're looking for something else, like they need something, something else. So when I when I talk about it and when I describe what we're going to do with them, they're normally pretty open and pretty open and open about it. Now, at the same time, I do like to kind of work with where my patients or well, patients. So I see, I work with healthcare also. So sometimes I say patients and <laughs> clients synonymously. Um, but um, my, when uh, there are, there are times when my, my stuttering clients, they, um, you know, they're not there. Uh, they're not at the point where they can stutter openly. So you always have to work with the client where they are in their journey um, in order to get them to where they uh, uh, wh wh where they'll experience the most benefit. Um, but yeah, I most definitely have had some people. Normally, they just they they ask a lot of questions, which is completely fine. Um, and they are at times a little bit, you know, they quote the question if this is going to work or, or not, um, or if this is going to be beneficial. And then quest questioning is fine, fine too. You know, when you have, you know, some, something as debilitating as a stutter um, and you just want to be successful and you're paying money to 
to fix this when somebody says, well, hey, I'm going to make you stutter more than you ever have. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, they, uh, I expect the questions and I'm completely fine with that. And once they get started working with me, um, they realize, you know, what the benefits are. Um, yeah. St so st what stuttering is, um, you know, so much of the therapy that, you know, more of like a beha behavioral approach to therapy is really trying to not stutter. We're doing things to try to not stutter. And what happens is, well, so essentially we're avoiding stuttering. What, what, what happens is the more that you avoid stuttering, the more you're going to find you're going to stutter more. That's just, that's just how it is. The more that you avoid what you're naturally born to do, which, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, how, however you want to look at it, is, is stutter. That's how you were made. Um, the more that you're gonna, the more that you're gonna stutter when you when you try to avoid it. So, yeah. So, so what questions do people usually uh, people usually have? You said people have a lot of questions. Um, so, so, so you explain um, you explain all this, and then what what do people usually ask? Uh, I mean, like, how long is it going to take? You know, why is this better than like? Here's here's what I was doing be before. Why is this better than um, what or why will this work better than what they're doing? My answer is well, I don't know. I don't always know if it's going to work b b better, but what I've seen is that it's definitely easier than trying to, to not to not stutter. You know, it's I mean maybe it's not questions per se, but it's a lot of different emotions and feelings about it. Um, that you kind of have to guide them in the right direction um, to make the most out of out of it. So maybe, maybe not like specific questions, but I mean, I get the question a lot, you know, how, how long is this going to take? You know, how many sessions do I need? And the answer to, to, to that is I really don't know. It's so individual and it's so and actually, I mean, you know, really, I could see them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I mean, I think like it's, I mean, there are always things that I can do with them to make their, um, their communication easier. Um, so it's really like, you know, when you want, when you think that you are at a, when you think that you're at a, at a point where you are successfully speaking and speaking openly and that stuttering is not negatively impacting your life anymore, that's when you can make the choice to kick me to the curb. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Um, cool. That's, um, that's, that's, a, um, that, that's interesting. And, um, and it, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a question that I have because, um, like I think some I, I think a lot of people are just so frustrated like like and I don't think it's I don't think it's unique to uh, to stuttering I think it's um, I think it's the same way with cluttering or in, or probably any other um, any other issue with speech is that when uh, when people when people start saying hey well I want to work on it. Um, they, uh, um, their first, their first thoughts are, well, well, maybe there's a cure. Maybe I can be cured of this in, um, in a week or two, if I just do this or, um, this or this. And, um, and, and, and I've kind of realized that that's, uh, like, like, that's a, that's, that's a really natural question to ask, but it's probably sure. not, it's probably not a, like, um, it's probably not a, um, a very like realistic question to ask, and and I think you already uh, pretty much like answered that, like um, um, answered that. But that's fine. Yeah, there uh, is uh, there is no there is no cure for stuttering, and I definitely get you know people. I get people who message me at least a couple times a week. Help help me! I need to get rid of this, and. Um, it's hard because there are so many, there are so many different um, resources online that are not evidence-based where p p people are offering a quick fix. Um, and these p p people have tried these things and they don't work because we're dealing with a, we're, we're 
dealing with a neurological dis disorder here. We're not dealing with a curable disease. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, um, for me, there is a cure for stuttering. And that is when the stuttering just becomes something that you do. It just becomes, you know, how you speak. Uh, it's not getting rid of stuttering completely, but it's most definitely getting rid of how like the negative um, feelings about stuttering and the, um, the, the negativity that you have about it. You know, once you're free of all of that, you've cured your stuttering. You've, you've, you've cured how, how it's negatively affecting your, your life. Um, it no longer holds you back. It no longer dictates how you live your life. Um, it's just something that you, that you do, you know, just like, you know, other people have other things that they live with. You learn that it's okay to be who you are and to live with it. That's the cure for stuttering. So <laughs> I could say that I have the cure, but that would be, you know, <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that wouldn't work out very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so, um, and so I think, um, I think it's really, um, I think it's really interesting because I think part of um, part of the question of what what's the cure for stuttering is re is realizing that that's kind of the wrong question to be asking. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it's not the the cure. It's what can I do to live my life to the fullest and not let stuttering uh, dictate how I how I do it. You know, like how can I achieve all my goals that I've always wanted to? that's it and my, my, my answer is well you can it's you just you talk differently than most others but that doesn't mean that you can't be whoever you want i have i know i know people who are who are airline pilots who are who are in the army who are police officers who are you know, every other, every single profession out there that is, that requires communication, uh, those people, people stutter. It's just, you know, how do you want to choose to live your life with stuttering? So, yeah. <laughs> huh. And, um, and, and I want to, um, I want to I want to switch um, switch gears a little bit. Um, one of the things um, one of the things that I um, that th that I heard about you from a from a podcast you were on is um, is that after the um, after the King's Speech movie, then you um, uh, um, um, then you uh, then then you kind of use that as a way of like promoting stuttering awareness. And yeah. and I, um, I was I was gonna I was gonna uh, uh, so, sorry this is kind of a long. Um, introduction to this question, but but I was going to watch the King's Speech, but then um, then I found out that at the very end, then he like learns to like control his stuttering by uh, by singing, and that, uh, right. that that just like made me so mad um, that um, that I um, that I never actually watched it. Um, it's it, it's now on my to watch list because um, enough yeah. um, enough people with um, enough people with stuttering um, really really like that movie, so um, so. so so, so, so I'm realizing it's just not like, like it's more about the experience I'm guessing than um, than saying hey well we have a cure for for, for stuttering but uh, but anyway like like um, a lot of people have said that to me saying oh, oh, oh well Joseph I um, I, um, I know you um, I know you well well they, um, uh, they they never describe it the way that I would describe it but uh, like my speech, but they say, "Hey, well, uh, I know you're. Um, I know you're kind of bothered by your speech, uh, which I'm not actually bothered by my speech. But, 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 um, but you sound but, but great. It, uh, <laughs> you sound, yeah. you sound uh, good. <laughs> so, um, so, um, so, 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 so people say, "Well, I, um, you're, you're, I know you're bothered by your speech, and and I watched this movie, or um, I, um, like, like, like before the King's Speech, then." Uh, then the story was a pretty, um, pretty common like story of uh, a, a, like motivational story. So, so, so I heard, um, I heard about this guy and he sang and then he, um, and then he was able to, to fix his speech. So, so maybe, uh, may, maybe this can work for you. And, uh, it, 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 and, and for me, like, uh, like it doesn't really like, like, I don't think that really um, would ever even work with cluttering. Um, 
if I if I sang uh, if I sang stuff and and I don't uh, like I've never heard anyone like like just singing everything. Um, so, so, so it'd be a little um, so, awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so for me, that um, that that whole thing of hey, hey, um, I've um, I've got um, I've got this cure for you. You can just um, you can just start seeing. Uh, just just seems just so like out of uh, like anyway. It 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 makes me mad whenever I hear that. So that's uh, um, that's that's why I haven't watched the King's Speech um, yet, or or, or uh, that's why that's why I didn't watch it for a while. But it, it only got on my to watch list like a year ago. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, um, so, so, so anyway, um, can, um, can you talk, um, can you talk about that, that a little bit and, and, um, uh, why on the surface having this like super overly simplified, um, cure, um, um, um uh, obviously the movie is a lot deeper than, um, um, yeah. than that. um, otherwise you wouldn't have been promoting it, uh, but, but can you, um, can you kind of talk about that? And, and, and I'm yeah. also interested in like, like your, um, like, like what you're doing to promote stuttering awareness. Sure. Um, so in regards to the King's speech, yes, what they were doing in the King's speech was definitely not something that we would do right now. Um, now, I wouldn't say that I haven't seen the King's, King's speech in many, many years. I wouldn't say that it was cured by if I'm not mistaken, I don't think it was cured by, I mean, first of all, it wasn't cured in general. He definitely still stuttered, but he definitely stuttered with, um, he was able to definitely move forward in his speech a little bit easier. I think it was mainly, I think his speech therapist was really kind of incorporating a little bit of rhythm. I don't know. It was a while ago, but regardless we had we 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 have to look at the time period you know at that time we didn't have the research that we have now as far as treatment of stuttering so i mean i think it's a good story about how it can how stuttering can really affect you um from any from an emotional side um we get to see a lot of his feelings a lot of his frustrations and that's what i think that movie was really um important for I mean, maybe not like how it was treated or you know how he moved um you know how he more effectively did his speech but really um you saw the emotions and how stuttering made him feel i think that that was what was really imp really important and I wasn't promoting it because of what they were like, how they were approaching it or, you know, how they did it. I was mainly promoting because it was really a big mainstream stuttering. Um, I mean, it was the first time that I can re remember that stuttering was in the news, you know, in the mainstream media, um, that stuttering was out there and people, could finally understand in a sense what what stuttering was you know um the fact that it won so many awards you know it, it was just out there and it really gave me the opportunity to um promote not necessarily the movie but definitely awareness of what stuttering is and um the the resources that are out that are out there so um, as far as like melody and singing goes and stuttering, yeah, of course, you know, if you want to go ahead and sing everything that you say all day long, you probably won't stutter. You're going to sound <laughs> just as weird <laughs> though. <laughs> so, I mean, people are going to, I mean, I don't know, like if you'd, would you, would you rather have people look at you and stare at you? while you're stuttering and think, well, why is he talking like that? Or would you rather have people look at you and stare at you while you're singing everything that you're saying and saying and asking why is he singing everything? You know, it's like, I mean, the thing is like, it's not, it's just not a functional way of approaching stuttering. It's, it's, it's very unnatural. Um, you know, my stuttering therapy approach is, is natural. And that is the most probably unnatural thing you can, can do is to change how 
you're talking completely. Um, people are just going to look look at you with the same awkwardness, like, well, why is he talking like that? <laughs> or like, well, why is he singing everything? That's just weird. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and, um, and that's uh, that, uh, that's a really uh, that's a really cool like objective um, breakdown. Uh, much. Uh, much, uh, much better than my like emotional reaction to it of like, oh, this is uh, like, like I, I can't, uh, I can't stand when people um, tell me that. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so, so that's a, uh, that's a really cool, uh, that's a really cool like walk through um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with, uh, with that. And, and I hadn't, uh, I hadn't thought of that before that if you sing everything, then it's like um, maybe even more unnatural than uh, well, well, I've heard uh, I've heard lots of um, people that stutter, but I haven't heard anyone that sings everything. Nobody, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird. It's like your own little opera. Like, do, 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 do you want to just make your own little? You know, do you want to just be an opera? Like, maybe he's training to be an opera singer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's why he's singing everything he's singing. I don't know. It's just very unnatural. Yeah, yeah. I um. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, um, okay, and um, and then uh, and then speaking of uh, speaking of popular culture, um, um, so so Joe um, Joe, um, Joe Biden is is commonly uh, well. I watched a video with with Joe Biden talking about that he he stuttered when he was a kid, but now he doesn't stutter, yeah. and um, and and so that's that's different than every other person with stuttering that I've ever heard. Like, uh, like. Um, like like, like pretty much, uh, like I, well, I did an interview with Ken, Ken St. Louis, and I think he kind of like messed up on one word, but, but like, like now his, uh, now his speech I love, is. I love him. <laughs> oh, He's yeah, awesome. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, so in, um, in my interview with Ken St. Louis, then, um, th th then I talked, I, I talked about that and he said, oh, well, actually in, um, I think, I, I think he learned Turkish. And he said, "In it, it's really interesting. In, in Turkish, I just like like I completely stutter everything. So so all all, all you need like if, if you want me to transform into a into like someone stuttering very severely, then just have <laughs> um, then just force me to speak Turkish is, is basically what he said. So um, um so, um, so so like so, so like Ken St. Louis like to the um like to the casual listener." Um, people would say he he doesn't he doesn't stutter, but um, but Ken, but Ken St. Louis, when I, if if you ever ask him, he's like, oh yes, I I absolutely still stutter. Um, so 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 that's really different, and, and I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's it's just like if Joe Biden's a covert stutterer, or if he just never actually stuttered. Maybe uh, maybe he had cluttering instead, or or or, or like exactly um, exactly what. Um, but 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 I don't know. Um, do, um I. I think you mentioned Joe Biden in one of in your interview, your podcast with Daniela. Um, so I'm uh, um, so, so so I'm wondering if you if you know like does does he actually stutter? Um, yeah. Is he um, was uh, is he pretending to stutter? Is he uh, is he lying about um, <laughs> uh, not stuttering now or or, or what's uh, what what's like the real thing about Joe Biden? So I, I mean, like, where do I start? It's it's complicated with him. Um, the thing, so does Joe Biden stutter? Yeah, absolutely. He, he stutters. Is he, so Joe Biden grew up in an era where stuttering was very, 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 had just a negative, negative, um, stigma, a very, very negative stigma. And the goal of all therapy then was to basically not stutter. Uh, you know, stuttering was looked looked down upon, um, and he learned at that time to avoid stuttering. You know, that's why when you see him on stage, he 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 phrases things certain ways. He says things certain ways that are not authentic to how he was going to actually say them in the first place. That's actually that's that's stuttering. That's just that's covert stuttering. Um, and if you saw during his final debate with, actually his second debate with Donald Trump, Donald Trump was really pushing it. I mean, he was really being very, he was interrupting him. He was criticizing him. It, 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 was, it was terrible. And 
during that debate, you saw more disfluencies because it was just harder for him to um, to get the words out with somebody interrupting him nonstop. Does he stutter? Absolutely. He actually, um, uh, I believe he spoke at an NSA conference many, many, many years ago. And then he was actually, um, they videoed him into, like he recorded something during a more recent conference also for us. He does say, that he, he doesn't say that he doesn't stutter anymore. He says that he overcame stuttering. Now, the definition of overcoming stuttering, I don't know. You know, you can look at that as a few different ways. Does overcome stuttering mean that you no longer stutter? To some people, maybe that's what it means. Um, for him, I can tell you that overcoming stuttering um, might mean to him that, well, he can manage it well by changing his words around. Yeah, he, most, he most definitely, definitely stutters. There's definitely tension there. Um, but um, he doesn't really totally admit to it directly. Um, but it's very, it's very, very evident that he does stutter and he knows that he stutters. Um, and I mean, that, that whole thing with Braden Harrington, that was really good also for, um, for the general public to see. It's, it's almost like, you know, the, um, having Braden Harrington there, you know, speaking at the convention and all that, um, that was really good because it was kind of like Braden Harrington basically said all the things that Joe could have said <laughs> about himself um, uh, and, um, you know, how, how, how stuttering affects him and, what, and whatnot. Um, I do think that it's good for the community as a whole to see Joe Biden out, out there speaking. Um, do I wish that he would approach stuttering a different way or at least talk about stuttering a different way? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, absolutely I do. You know, it, it would make things a lot easier. It would, you know, the, the, the people who are against him, it'll stop them maybe from thinking that he has dementia or thinking that, you know, he's cognitively impaired. Um, but, you know, as I said earlier, everybody's on their own journey. Everybody approaches stuttering a different way. In the end, it's really good for us in the stuttering community to see somebody out there, you know, every day in the, in the public eye. Yeah. Uh, and that's, um, and that's really interesting. And, and, and I, I didn't pick up on that, um, that his phrase um, over that, that he overcame stuttering and that, and that basically, um, and that basically over, overcame uh, means a uh, few avoidance behaviors. Um, and, uh, and, and also I watched, uh, uh, I, uh, one of the benefits of living in um, Thailand is I don't have to get too involved in US politics. Um, so, um, so I, um, I, that's I, a huge, I, that's a huge positive. <laughs> that's a um, very, very big thing. Um, so, um, so, very jealous of you. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so I've only, um, I've only watched like a, a few YouTube videos, but, but one, uh, one YouTube video was analyzing one of the debates and, um, and they, um, and, and one of the criticisms they had of, of Joe is that he, like, like, um, he, he had just big sections of, of memorized, um, memorized speeches um, in the um, yeah. in the debates, um, and so 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 the point was something else. But uh, but but now that you're um, now that you're saying that he um, he he avoids certain like words and phrases, then uh, th then that totally makes sense that he would want to like that his method of over of overcoming is basically memorizing a whole bunch of stuff that he can say fluently. Um, and, and, and and I do wish. Thinking, I mean, uh, like I do wish that his. I wish he would stop using the, the, the term overcome because it really does, you know, it confuses people. Um, but again, uh, that's kind of where he, where he is and, you know, 
Yeah, and and you gave the um, you gave the background that he's uh, like like that he's pretty he's pretty old and so and like like the, pretty old. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, climate, um, like, like 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 probably the way that he looks at stuttering, which is um, I, I don't know how many decades before um, before of um, how many how you're looking at stuttering, but it, it it was just a different time back then. So absolutely, um, it was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, it was. Um, so yeah. uh, so so that makes uh, that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense. So 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 this uh, so my next question is it's kind of a uh, it's kind of like personal advice because um, so so like for me. Um, I didn't really talk very much when I was younger, and um, and, and it wasn't until I was like 30, um, around like 33, 35, that I learned how to speak in a way where I could string like a paragraph of words together. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so I could always, um, I could always speak, um, but just, um, just I didn't really like figure out how to, well, I call it that I didn't really figure out how to speak, but it was more that I didn't uh, like that I, I, I wasn't, it, it was like when, when I was like 30, um, 33 or 35 that I could have a conversation like this where, where like I'm talking, you're talking, I'm talking, you're talking like, like yeah. before, uh, uh, before then, like my conversations weren't like that at all. Like I couldn't, uh, I, I hadn't figured that out. Um, and so, um, and so, so I've noticed this, like, like in a couple, um, in a couple of my interviews, I've, I've used the word bad. Um, and, and I think like, um, like, like, uh, like, uh, like for me, that's accurate because my speech was bad, um, and then I figured out some techniques, and now my speech is much better. Um, but a couple, uh, a couple people in my videos, as as I've been, uh, have stopped me and said, "Hey, well, um, Joseph, what you need to do is like, don't um, don't use this word bad. It's it's more this and this and this." Um, and 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 somebody stopped me when I um, somebody stopped me when I was saying good also. Um, um, because like, like if I say, well, now my speech is good and before my speech is bad or, or now my speech is better and before my speech is worse. Um, so, so I don't know, um, like, like, I think, um, I think part of it is I don't really have the vocabulary to describe, to, to like accurately describe and, and, and good and bad aren't really very good words because they, like they're, um, they're a word like, uh, the, the word with how with like 20 different definitions if you look them up in the dictionary um so uh, so, so they're probably like better like like a lot more accurate words out there than that but, uh, but but like what's your advice to someone like me that like i'm um i'm not a um, i'm not a professional speech language pathologist i'm just kind of trying to describe my um describe my experience and like the way I would kind of naturally describe my experience is that my speech was uh, my speech was bad. Then I learned some techniques, and now my speech is better, or good. Uh, but but uh, but but I think that I think that has kind of like trigger words or whatever, um, like like the good and bad. So um, so so can you kind of help me to um, help me or educate me to get better wording to help me to describe my experience? I think, I think your experience with your speech is always evolving. Um, I, I would definitely not, ref, not refer to it as bad because, you know, that's just how you spoke at the at the time. You know, I don't think that we can speak badly. Um, I think that's a yeah. That's not a. Um, I, I don't think that's in that's an accurate term. I think it's mainly at the at the time before you know thirty four, like your mid your mid thirties. You were um, you were speaking more of a um, in um, yeah, I don't know, like how how would I ex explain it um you were not really there in your journey i guess i mean i think that your experiences with speaking are continually evolving everybody is on their own journey um uh, back when i was in middle school elementary school i couldn't get a word out and i wouldn't call that that i was speaking 
badly. I would just say that, you know, it, I was having a, I was having a tough time getting my words out. Um, is specifically to how, how we're saying it. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a, and, and that also, I mean, that can also cause some stigma that stuttering is a bad thing, all right? And, or, you know, cluttering is a bad thing. Not being able to speak like, not speaking like everyone else does is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just, it's just a different way of speaking. It's a different, it's, it's a different way of communicating. It's just how we, how we speak. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call it bad. I would just call it, you are, you are, you are evolving. Um, the way that you communicate now is a change in, in a direction where you're speaking easier. Maybe your speech was a little bit harder, um, but, but, but now it's easier. I don't know. I'm not sure. Does that m make sense? Yeah, yeah, and um, and actually, probably, um, probably what I, because um, a lot of times when I write something out, is it's it's um, easier for me than uh, than speaking. So um, so so after um, after listening to you to your you kind of walking through that, um, I realized that I haven't really like um, I haven't really thought very much in depth about like what my experience actually was. Um, and so probably like when I'm speaking about it, then I'm just using pretty like generic or, or um, pretty like broad, broad brushstroke words where maybe if I, uh, maybe if I wrote up more of like what my experience was, um, then I would be able to get more specific words, like, like the specific words that you, uh, um, that you use to. So, um, yeah. so, uh, so, so, so I don't think, um, I, I probably can't. It'll probably take me a while, a while to like digest that answer. But um, but it's a good um, it's a good recommendation for me to I like. I would think about your emotions more. You know how it made you feel, In, instead of you know it made you feel bad. But be more specific. You know, it made me feel scared. It made me feel anxious. You know, speaking this way made me feel anxious. It made me feel frustrated. Yeah. I would focus more on the emotions of it rather than just a general, you know. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's the, um, yeah. I um, uh, part of my question is more like how do I how do I get people to stop um, criticizing me for using the word bad? Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but 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 the answer to that uh, like like uh, you and you just basically gave me the answer. If I talk about my experience, saying well, um, back. Um, back when, um, back when, back in, uh, back in this period when I was really, really frustrated with this, or when I was really like this emotion about this, then, uh, th th then nobody can argue with me about that. So yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, so, um, so that's, um, that's, that's good. Uh, that's good advice. Um, okay. So, so actually we've been talking almost two hours now. So, that's great. Uh, so, so, so um, this, uh, th uh, this has been, uh, this has been really, really awesome. Um, you've, uh, you, um, you've answered like all of my questions and, oh, good. Uh, and, um, and a lot of like, like a lot of stuff that I had just a little bit of detail about stuttering, you gave like really, really good uh, um, really, really good answer. So, so I feel like um, I feel like my knowledge level has gone like up like two or three, um, two or three notches. Or, or, or the, <laughs> that's the, great. I've just, uh, um, I've just had like a stuttering masterclass. So, uh, <laughs> I'm really so. happy to hear that. <laughs> and I mean, you know, so, my uh, like, you you can you can con contact me as really you know anybody can can contact me at any t at any time through my website. Um, if they do have any questions too. So yeah, absolutely. I'm always open to talking about stuttering. I, I could talk about this for another three hours. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, um, cool, cool. And um, anything, um, anything that we missed out or any, any, anything else that you'd like to talk about or, or final, uh, final words for the video? I would just say that, I mean, stuttering, that it's not just about the physical, aspects of stuttering. It's not just about the, the, the blocks and prolongations and repetitions. What it's about is how you feel about it and how you um, 
you know, how you manage your, your emotions about it. And, you know, it, stuttering is, stuttering doesn't need to dictate how you live your life. You know, it can, it, it might shape your life a little bit. Um, you know, it most definitely shaped mine, you know, becoming a speech therapist. Um, but it doesn't have to determine how you live. You know, it doesn't have to negatively affect you. It can just be a thing that you, that you do. Um, I think that's, you know, the most important part here is that be who you are and don't let anything stop you stuttering or, you know, anything at all. Don't, don't let, don't let anything stop you from achieving all of your goals and aspirations in life. And that's, yeah, that's, that's that. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, well, well, thank you. And that's a, uh, that's a really, really great um, positive um, note to end this on. So, so, so thank you. Um, thank you again so much for, for doing this. It's been um, great talking to you. Yeah, it was very, very nice to speak, speak with you. Thank you for the opportunity.